What up, y'all? I'm back with another review, and I'm here to review the newest studio album from Nas entitled Nasir. This is Nas's 12th studio album. It's exclusively produced by Kanye West, and this is the fourth album of the, I believe it's called The Wyoming Sessions for Kanye West. Uh, I reviewed Ye and Kid See Ghost in the same video. I reviewed both in the same video. Um, Daytona from Pusha T. Reviewed that as well, and we're here with this now. The fifth of the Wyoming sessions is Tiana Taylor's KTSE, which I did listen to, and out of the eight tracks, like I think I think it only needed to be like four tracks. It could have been a dope four track EP. I actually tweeted that, and so I'm not really gonna review it. I, I'd rather I'd rather listen to her last album than this new one. Uh, so uh, so four to five. That ain't bad at all. Like, that's damn good for Kanye with the Wyoming sessions. Because this album is, um, I'm giving it a thumbs up because I really fuck with this album. Let's go ahead and get right into this. The first track, I want, there's only one track I don't talk about. And that's, I think it was the third track, White Label. White Labels. Um, it just, it felt like the only, it kind of felt like the only track that was kind of out of place. Um, it it just like it just fell out of place for some reason. Like I get the whole um yay I mean not yay Nas just speaking on how the difference in upbringing, just life in general, um white kids to black kids. I I get what he's saying, but I just it's just the track itself. I'm I'm just not fucking with it that heavy. So. I'm never really going to speak on that, even though I just did kind of speak on it. The first track I want to talk about, though, in full is Not For Radio, featuring Puff and 070 Shake. Puff here was just yelling into, which is what he does on tracks that he's featured on. He's just yelling. That, that's what he's doing. Uh, he he kind of made me laugh. I kind of got inspired because that's kind of what Puff does, at least nowadays, with his, when he's featured and he's just yelling, but more so when he, when he's tweeting or when I see videos of him just speaking, it's like Puff's a very motivating person. So even though it's like, what is Puff doing here? What Puff's doing here is just being Puff, like just just being loud and just 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 being Puff. Like uh, here, Nas though, he was just speaking on well, black shit. Like he was speaking on. Um, his OG shit, just talking about, um, he, he was just naming things, like, he was just running off the mouth a little bit, just saying things like, <clears throat> talking about Lincoln, uh, the SWAT team, Willie Lynch, John Hanson, not being the first president, not being the first black president, uh, <clears throat> Edgar Hoover being black, Ronald Reagan having Alzheimer's, Fox News being, um, founded, started by a white, a black man, uh, just, just saying things and saying things, so, it was, I guess you could say he was dropping knowledge, even though some of the stuff you you don't really know. I mean, for him to say it like he knows, like that's that's bold. But <clears throat> um, but yeah, I thought this was a cool track. It kind of set the tone, just because not for the radio. I don't know what track on here is gonna be for the radio, really, except for maybe everything with the A and the Dream. But we'll get into that. Shout out to the dream, by the way. Like ever since, like late 2015, when he was on Push's album "Darkest Before Dawn," like he uh, <laughs> like, he's just been featured like um, not everywhere, but he's been featured on a few albums from notable artists. It's like the dream is back, but he's back <laughs> for features. He's not back for his own shit, or at least what I <laughs> what I know of. <laughs> um, track two, cop shot the kid. Featuring uh, Kanye. I like what Kanye did with the sample, the Slick Rick sample from Children's Story. It was cool. It, it just kept going and going and going. And, uh, um, it was kind of annoying, a little bit repetitive, but I just got used to it because it just, I just figured, you know what, it's not going away. This is this is the whole track. I'm going to be hearing this. Um, but see, I fuck with the beat. And I like how it got darker towards the end. Like It, it kind of got a little ambient, but kept the Slick Rick sample in there it's like i messed with the track i prob 
I care more about not for radio more than um cop shot the kid though. Uh, track number four, Bonjour featuring Tony Williams. This shit is lavish. I've got to say. I will say this. I'm not saying like this is one of Nas's best bars, but I'm saying that this quotable is kind of funny. It's it's kind of corny. Being on it, like uh, she didn't see me coming. Now she's an eyewitness. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like. Alright, nah, it's like, okay, fine, like, I'll, I'll, I'll let you have that one just because you're the OG, like, <laughs> check number five, everything featuring Ye in the dream, here, I right, Ye, well, him and just dream were saying, like, yo, little black boy, don't cry, like, don't shed tears, like, there's so much life left in you, like, you don't think the same as everyone else, you've never conformed you've never thought the same or just acted the same you've always been different and they're just encouraging people who are different to continue being themselves and for people who um maybe are different and aren't um they're just conforming so they can avoid things like don't do that be who you are if you're different that's special be different which everyone's different but then there are those people who stick out from the crowd even though they kind of fit into the crowd or sometimes don't like kanye west I feel like Kanye might have been talking to himself here, like maybe a younger him, a younger him, which I don't think Kanye's ever compromised for anybody. So, big up to Kanye. Um, and then Nas comes in talking about all the things that he would change, like the problems in the black community from um, uh, self hatred, desperation for acceptance. I'm not gonna say immunizations at birth is exclusive to the black community because that happens to every one. Well. For the most part, everyone who's who's born in every race, so well, at least in America and other countries. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there was also one, oh yeah, inclusion is a hell of a drug. He's just saying like, yeah, inclusion is a hell of a drug. Like that desperation for acceptance, like I said, and just saying like people who have <clears throat> everything still never have another. It's like, like the people who who kill themselves. Um, n- not everyone who kills themselves. I'm just saying like maybe somebody like. You could think of somebody like Anthony Bourdain, like, seemed like he had everything, right? Robin Williams, like, they got everything, but it's still never enough. It's like, uh, it's, it's just fucked up. And like, freaking Nas, when he said, like, the first house he bought, it was haunted by a dead rich white man who was mad that a nigga bought his house. <laughs> it's like, um, look, that, that's what's up. I, I'm fuck with that. Um, and just... Yeah, I really fuck with this track. I feel like this would be like the only track that would make it to the radio, but just then not saying what he said right there. It's like, we'll see. We'll see if that makes the radio. Like, <laughs> track number six, Adam and Eve featuring Dream. <clears throat> I really fuck with the beat. I can play Assassin's Creed to this beat. I was actually playing Assassin's Creed to this beat while re listening to this album and this track specifically over and over and over. Here, Nas is. Uh, Speaking on things from wisdom to living a um, bit of a lavish kind of royal lifestyle, and just his his morning walk, then finding a cigar and putting the guns in there and just going out like just um, sinning a bit, um, knowing yourself, so having knowledge of self, um, blocking out your enemy, um, learning, growing, um, growing awareness, uh, investing, enjoying the fruits of your labor. Um, how he used to, how he came from a toxic um group of friends and now he has friends in high places um just oh, the time management and how insecurities holding niggas back and i like this one quote he said where he said they ain't stop printing money because they made mine now i wonder what he's i wonder how he's saying that like is he trying to say like they ain't stop printing money um because they made mine like yo i got money so they didn't stop printing it. or is he saying like yo just because i got money doesn't mean nobody else can get money now i wonder how he's trying to say that or if he's trying to say it in both ways um but yeah or he could you never know he could be saying it in a different way and i don't know what the hell i'm talking about <laughs> so, and track number seven the last track on here <clears throat> simple things uh, here just now nice speaking on you know longevity and uh, moving forward like like he said one time he was like I forget what track this was. They said, like, yo, the people want Illmatic. And I'm not talking about the track we major with Really Doe and Kanye on uh, their registration. 
Ye second album. I'm talking one track, one track in particular where he said like they want Illmatic, but it's like nah, no going back to the past or staying in one place, only moving forward. So he was just speaking on longevity, moving forward, and how he never sold a record for the beat. It's my verses they purchase. Without production, he's worthless. Without production, I'm worthless, but I'm more than the surface. And how it's just the simple things in life. I'm like, uh, that's something I really take away from this album. Like, not just the simple things in life, but yeah, like, they're not buying the record for the beat. They're buying it for his verses. Um, and they may say, like, he's letting you know, like, I know people don't think I'm good at picking beats. Like, without production, I'm, um, like, what am I? But people are still buying the record. They're still buying the record, though, because of what I'm saying on it. So it's like, not only in hip-hop, but in other things, like, you can have, you can be more than just um, something that's in, not necessarily the background, but just, you can be more than just one thing. There, there are more elements to success than what may seem like the one or two major things. So, uh, I mean, heck, heck look, at, um, look at guys like Master P. Master P, he had the beats. Um, no one really quoted Master P like that. The, the closest thing niggas are clo- um, quoting to Master P is when they go, uh, like, with Nas, you don't really care about the beats too much unless it's Illmatic, um, but you care about the verses. And then you get some artists where you get the verses and the beats, so it's like best of both worlds. Some artists make up for a lack in one of the worlds when they are top tier in one and maybe lacking in the other. So you don't have to be like, you don't have to necessarily conform to what is being consumed or what's more popular, if you get what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, seven tracks. This was like 26 minutes. The other three, Daytona. Um, Yay and Kitsy Ghost. I believe they were all seven tracks with 21 minutes. This was 26. And I think KTSC was like eight tracks in 22 minutes. So, um, yeah, still, great out, al- Good album from Nas. Um, I really mess the most with Simple Things, Adam and Eve, Everything, and Bonjour. Cot Shot the Kid and Not for the Radio were cool, but they don't measure to. Really everything in Adam and Eve, if I'm being honest. Bonjour and Simple Things kind of are in the same boat, having that, um, just that, that really good beat that you can just, just vibe to, and get a little bit of substance. It was more so Adam and Eve and everything for me though. And like I said, White Labels, it was a good track. I just, it's not for me. Uh, so if I was gonna rate this album, uh, let's see. If I was gonna, dang, if I was gonna rate this album, it'd be like a six point five to a yeah, six point five to a seven. Honestly, like I don't think this is the album that Nas was building up for six years. Honestly, like maybe this is just to be a part of the Wyoming sessions. If he has his own solo album though, that he's working on, where it's not just Yay production, it's um, Yay and maybe other people. Um, I could see that. I don't think this is the album he was building up for six years because if that's the case, and he made it's like he averaged one song a year, and this is what he put out. And for a six to seven year wait, that's <laughs> that's not good. So, uh, what did you think about this album? Though, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my review on it. If you haven't heard this album, I still recommend that you check it out, even though you you could argue it's not Nas's best work. It's still a damn, it's still a good album. It doesn't doesn't necessarily put a blemish on his discography and his career, for me at least. So, um, yeah, uh, be sure to hit the like button if you like this review. Share the review. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you like the content that you see. Also, be sure to check the description so you can see everything from my social medias to my email to just everything. Just check the description and you'll see something that you might want to click on. Yeah, and um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I will see y'all next time.